When it comes to Android phones, much like many nerds out there, I am partial towards Google Pixel lineup of phones. Want proof? Well, I'm still holding on to the Pixel 3 XL despite that ugly bucket notch, primarily because I still think that stock Android is the best version of Android. Therefore, when Google announced the Pixel 6 series, I was really excited to test out the changes and upgrades to this lineup because they looked very impressive. But the story has ended up slightly differently after I used a loaner unit from a friend. Let's just say that I'm slightly disappointed with the overall experience and I'm reconsidering my decision to buy a phone for personal use. Well, my name is Ashad. you're watching My Smart Price. Let's talk a little bit more about the Pixel 6 Pro. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever My Smart Price puts out an awesome new tech video. And we're trying to hit 100k release soon, so we need all your support. Now before I trigger Pixel fans by talking about the downsides of the phone, let me tell you all the good things about the Pixel 6 Pro and why I like this phone. First and foremost, Android 12 is an absolutely gorgeous operating system upgrade. Unequivocally, the design language of Android 12 is better than every other mobile operating system out there. It is whimsical, takes risks, and lets you control how your phone looks every time you take it out of the pocket. From the excellent Material You Design's special wallpaper-based theming engine and themed icons to privacy-specific features that tell you clearly which app is using your mic or camera, Android 12 is easily my favorite operating system this year. But what's even better are some of the exclusive features that come only to the Pixel 6 series, some of which have been made possible by Tensor's artificial intelligence and machine learning jobs. For example, the live speech-to-text-to-translation conversion that happens real-time on the private compute core instead of the cloud is absolutely mesmerizing. It helps you have a basic conversation with anyone, even if you don't know the language they speak. It is not entirely accurate, but it works flawlessly most of the time. Hindi to Marathi, English to German, Marathi to Tamil. You name the language translation, and Google's Translate app and its live translate feature can handle it with ease. Now, the other areas where Tensor's ML chops come in clutch are when you use the Magic Eraser tool to automatically identify unwanted elements in the background and erase them from the edit function within the Photos app. When it works well, it does wonders. And then you can also play around with the feature to make some fun edits too. A couple of other cool features are the action pan and long exposure shots. You can really get some creative shots with these easy to use modes. Plus, there's a cool sky edit feature which is now available with certain Xiaomi phones as well. Now, while we are on the topic of cameras, the primary camera does offer sharper textures and fantastic dynamic range. But the iPhone 13 Pro Max is no slouch and there are many scenes where I prefer the iPhone's contrasty look. But the Pixel 6 Pro's ability to bring out details from the shadows does work in certain scenes. Now, if you've come this far and if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even comment below because the YouTube algorithm actually values engagement and it will push this video to more people looking for such content. The new 4X telephoto is a fantastic zoom camera and it is better than the iPhone 13 Pro Max's 3X telephoto. You get a closer punch in, sharper textures, better depth and an overall natural look as opposed to the artificial look of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now the selfies from the Pixel 6 Pro have better facial tones as opposed to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and they're also sharper. This is true whether you're shooting in the day or in the night or selfie portraits as you can clearly tell from these examples. In fact, even regular human subject pictures are more impressive and true to life with accurate facial tones on the Pixel 6 Pro. However, portraits are a toss-up depending on how you like it. I like the gradual, more DSLR-like blur effect on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but you might like the better edge detection of the Pixel 6 Pro. Also, the Pixel 6 Pro can shoot animal portraits slightly better in my opinion. Furthermore, the camera app itself has so many cool features. I really like how you can switch between all the video shooting modes such as normal, slow motion and time lapse from within the same page. Also, the different stabilization modes for shooting video are very unique too. Now, in my time with the phone, I didn't find an immediate use for these different stabilization modes, but I'm pretty sure that more you use the phone, these will come in handy at some point. 
Now, most of these tools help drill down complex DSLR-like features to push a button modes, which even untrained photographers can use with ease. You know what, I'd mentioned some of these features which were available even in the X70 Pro Plus in our previous video. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out. And for what it is worth, I think Google's implementation is slick and easy to understand with helpful guides. Another Pixel 6 exclusive feature that I chanced upon is the new game dashboard which offers optimization for certain games. Of the games I play, only Asphalt 9 had it. Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG New State, Armorjet and more weren't in the list. Also Google offers a live FPS counter and an option to stream directly to YouTube. Now apart from the software, I also like certain aspects of the hardware on the Pixel 6 Pro. For example, the speakers sound absolutely fantastic. They can get really loud and they have a good extension in the low end. So therefore you get adequate amount of thump from the sound as well. Furthermore, the haptic feedback is absolutely sublime. And when compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it is far more pervasive, meaning you get vibration feedback while typing, swiping back to go back in apps, and more. And the large AMOLED display gets extremely bright and offers HDR out of the box. Google has come a long way from the ill-fated Pixel 2 AMOLED display issues. This is a very, very good panel right up there with the best from Samsung, Xiaomi, and OnePlus. Finally, the pricing is fantastic for a full-blown flagship phone. Now, before we move on to the bad, I have a couple of disclaimers to make. This video is based on four days of usage of the Pixel 6 Pro before I have to actually return it. So therefore, I cannot call it a complete review, but it comes really, really close. And secondly, and most importantly, these are a bunch of subjective and objective opinions bunched together to make a video. That's generally how you review these products. So I'm sure that you might have differing opinions, so take them to the comment section below. But Please keep it civil. Let's not turn everything into a 9 p.m. prime time debate. Now, one reason why I still hold on to the Pixel 3 XL is the frosted glass back. I really like frosted glass back designs. From the S21 Ultra to the OnePlus 9 Pro to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I cannot get over how good these phones look. But the moment I laid my eyes on the Pixel 6 Pro and held it in my hand, the all glassy build sort of disappointed me. Also, the sort of sunny colorway didn't work for me either because the three-tone finish with the black camera bump doesn't look very cohesive. And there's a plastic strip antenna line on the top that is in a different color which further adds to the chaos and design. Plus, this glossy finish makes the phone extremely slippery. Now, I thought this could just be a problem with me, but I actually went on Reddit and real users seem to have a problem with the slipperiness of the phone and they're all suggesting that you get either a skin or a case. Now, while design is a subjective topic, I can't shake off the feeling that this industrial design is not Google's best work. Unfortunately, the in-display fingerprint reader is slower than normal. Sometimes it didn't even register my fingerprints. I think I'm really spoiled by the OnePlus, Oppo and Vivo phones to be able to be patient with slow unlock speeds. Now, this is also a very common issue that has been highlighted by many users and Google's explanation for it is that it is to ensure, you know, enhanced security protection. Now, there's no objective way to verify that claim, so we'll take Google's word on it. I was supremely excited about the camera upgrades on the Pixel 6 Pro. A new 48 megapixel sensor, a proper 4x telephoto, upgrades to video recording. Google was indeed promising a lot and I was expecting the best set of smartphone cameras ever but that's not really the case. The Pixel 6 Pro setup has issues too, and there are many situations where the iPhone 13 Pro Max pulls forward. To begin with, the ultra-wide lens on the Pixel 6 Pro with its 17mm, 114-degree ultra-wide cannot really be considered ultra-wide enough right next to the iPhone 13 Pro Max with its 13mm, 120-degree ultra-wide camera, which, by the way, offers crisper textures on close crop. Secondly, the Pixel 6 Pro tends to aggressively turn a warm scene into a cool one. As you can see here, instead of reproducing a nice tone of light brown under the warm light, the cushions have turned white. In fact, this happens a lot. Yes, the iPhone doesn't get white point right all the time either, but in most situations, I preferred Apple's algorithm to Pixel's. For example, in this picture of these fantastic french fries, or in the shot of inside a cafe based in you know soft warm light. Now, night mode capture on the Pixel 6 Pro is also slightly odd. What I noticed is that the Pixel 6 Pro invariably opens the shutter for a longer duration. So when the scene is entirely dark, I ended up with a lot of blurred shots because it took 2-3 to three seconds longer than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is more conservative. Although if you can keep still, the images do look sharper and have visibly less noise from the Pixel 6 Pro. 
Moving on, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is extremely contrasty look. It's also not something everyone likes is what I've come to learn. I do prefer it though. It feels more realistic. Now, another area where the iPhone 13 series beats the Pixel 6 comfortably is when you're shooting videos. While the Pixel 6 Pro has made a huge leap over previous generation Pixel phones, there's still a lot of noise in low light footage. The dynamic rich performance is nowhere close to the Dolby Vision capabilities of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And even the details are sharper on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So we're recording a 4K 60 FPS video using the Pixel 6 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This is what it looks like. I'm recording a 4K 60 FPS video using the Pixel 6 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This is what it looks like. So I'd like to reiterate, despite all the upgrades to the camera setup, the Pixel 6 Pro cannot be considered the absolute best out there. There's a lot of work still to be done for this to be, you know, considered the winner and which therefore dulls my enthusiasm to actually want the phone really bad. Now, most nerds, including myself, like I alluded before, were frothing at the mouth when we heard that Google was actually making a custom SoC for its Pixel 6 series. It's called the Tensor. The homegrown Tensor SoC is based on Samsung's 5 nanometer fabrication process and the performance lies somewhere between the Exynos 2100 and the Snapdragon 870. It's more like the Exynos 2100 if you ask me. It does have a very powerful Mali GPU though, and that shows in the 3D Mark Wildlife test, which is higher than even the Snapdragon 888. Also, daily performance is buttery smooth for the most part. Call of Duty runs at the absolute max graphics settings, and so does PUBG New State. But the phone heats up easily and throttles a lot and you know it routinely runs at 38 40 degrees even in regular usage and that's when delhi's temperature started cooling down and it's around the 70 to 20 degree range plus when i ran benchmarks or played games for a long duration it would heat up even more i ran the 3d mark wildlife stress test and got an abysmal stability of just 37 38 percent and the phone would heat up to 45 degrees easily now the CPU also throttles really quickly and if you use adaptive battery then Google clearly mentions that the CPU is bound to throttle. To be fair, Tensor is not the only chip with problems of sustained performance. Even Snapdragon 888 had the issue initially, especially with phones like the OnePlus 9 Pro. But now there are certain phones that do it, you know, fairly good uh, with respect to sustained performance. And that's where Tensor actually, you know, being in its first generation falls short. In fact, it's really bad compared, uh, you know, to Snapdragon 888. And most importantly, even many reputed publications like Anand Tech and GSM Arena have highlighted this issue. I shall add links in the description below. Tensor may be great for AI ML stuff, but for, you know, regular performance and sustained performance, I'm slightly disappointed. In fact, on many occasions, the phone would get hot during normal usage itself and certain apps like Twitter would start starting badly and you can see it for yourself on screen. Moreover, with the homegrown SoC, I actually expected the hardware software optimization to be really good and therefore offer great battery life as well especially with the Pixel 6 Pro considering it has a larger 5003 mAh battery, but the reality is different. Now, I used the phone without a SIM and could manage only 4 hours to 4 hours, 30 minutes of screen on time and moderate to heavy usage. This is obviously quite average and, you know, even adaptive battery will probably improve the battery life slightly and not more than this. Furthermore, the phone takes really long to charge as well. It doesn't even touch the max advertised speeds of 30 watts. Google has confirmed it tops out at 23 watts. What I noticed is that the first 50% charges really fast, but the next 50% is really, really slow. With adaptive charging, it's even slower. So realistically, you can expect the phone to charge from 0 to 100 in a little under two hours with adaptive charging off. Now, the final reason why, even if I wanted to, I couldn't possibly buy this phone is not based so much on the actual phone itself, but on Google's inability to actually have a widespread release and add more countries where, you know, availability was ensured for the Google Pixel 6 series. Currently, it is only limited to nine countries. So even if you wanted one, it'd be really difficult to buy it. And, uh, you know, this is a concern primarily because this was meant to be somewhat of a resurrection for the Pixel series. And I, you know, feel that it is a bit of a letdown that Google hasn't figured out a wider launch plan for the phone, especially for a company of Google's stature. I know a lot of Google Pixel fans in India wanted the phone to launch in the country. In fact, even I was one of them. In fact, you know, when I started using the phone, I had a narrative pre-planned in my head where I'd curse Google India for not bringing such a fantastic phone to our country. But after having used the phone, I don't feel so strongly 
anymore and i feel that you know most android fans aren't losing out on a lot and can you know depend on the multiple different alternatives that are currently available in the market now don't get me wrong this is still a very very good phone but not the absolute best out there and if you actually want one of the phones from the pixel 6 series i would suggest that you go for the pixel 6 because it offers great value at just 599 dollars i know many folks will have differing opinions and there could be many pixel fans out there waiting to hunt me down but i'd like to be as real as possible and most of my disappointment is actually stemmed from the fact that my expectations were sky high and it didn't live up to it what are your takes uh, let me know in the comment section below until next time this is Aisha from my smart price signing off goodbye and godspeed my friends